Hello everyone and welcome to Uncivil Law, where we learn through the misfortunes of others. Today is the exact opposite of water, water everywhere, but not a drop to drink because as it turns out, there's not that much water anywhere. And that brings us to the case of Texas versus New Mexico, a very long, very ongoing dispute between Texas and New Mexico regarding water rights. And because it's Texaco versus New Mexico, that means we're in the United States Supreme Court by original jurisdiction because that's what the Supreme Court is for, for hearing controversies between states when those states actually have controversies. And that would be exactly the, the issue with here. So someone else might have stolen someone else's water, so we're going to sue about the water and complain about water rights. Let's talk about riparian rights. Let's get started with this. This case is about evaporated water. Water that is unfortunately not presently available because, you know, evaporation. In the southwestern United States, the Pecos River begins in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and winds its way south for hundreds of miles through New Mexico and Texas before flowing into the Rio Grande River on the Texas-Mexican side of the border. The 1949 Interstate Compact, which is an agreement between the states, provides for equitable appropriation of the use of the water by New Mexico and Texas. So they're supposed to share nicely, but apparently this is a problem in this case. The dispute in this case started in 2014 when a tropical storm hit the Pecos River Basin. To prevent flooding, Texas asked New Mexico to temporarily store its water from the river that would otherwise flow to Texas. New Mexico agreed to do so. So this is this is an interesting, like, this is, I don't know what this is, but this seems like such a dick move. All right, so let's just make sure what's really going on here. You, you got to fully appreciate this. All right, so Texas and New Mexico have an agreement that we're going to share water. All right, so now Texas suddenly has way more water than it ever wanted because of a tropical storm. And they say to uh, they say to New Mexico, hey, New Mexico, would you mind holding on to the water that we're supposed to be getting from the river? Because we can't really use it right now because, you know, of the, the massive flooding and we can't really use the water. So we'd, we'd really prefer not to be sent the water right now. So would you mind taking our share off the river and, you know, not sending it to us so that, you know, our cities won't flood? And New Mexico said, okay, I'm going to help you out. I'm going to be a good neighbor and I'm going to store your water for you. And now Texas wants to sue New Mexico because they're not happy in the manner in which they stored their water. Something about that seems like such a dick move. It's like, would you please hold our water for us because we're about to be flooded. And New Mexico says, sure. And then it says, wait, you didn't hold our water properly. We're gonna sue you. Wait, what? That seems like such a dick move, but hey, that's where we are. Okay, so a few months later, New Mexico released the water to Texas after they wanted it, but it was less than they were hoping for. Okay, and in the interim, some of the water evaporated. The question therefore is straightforward. Under the compact, does New Mexico receive credit for the evaporated water, even though it wasn't delivered to Texas? The answer is yes. This seems like such a dick move. Texas is entitled to this water. Texas asked New Mexico, they asked New Mexico, please don't send us the water. Why? Because, you know, tropical storm flooding. And New Mexico said, okay, we'll hold your water for you. And then they said, can we have the water now? And they said, sure. And they said, well, this is less than we hoped for. Oh, some of it evaporated. We're gonna sue you. Wait, what? Okay, yeah, that happened. The Pecos River originates in the San Gre de Cristo mountain areas of Santa Fe, New Mexico. The river flows south into Texas, winding its way for hundreds of miles past oil fields, farms, ranches, and high school football stadiums of West Texas. I'm not sure why specifically we mentioned the high school football stadiums, but I guess whoever's writing this wants a little imagery. So we want to follow the water along in our minds. We will be the water. And as we are the water, we will observe the oil fields, farms, ranches, and high school football stadiums of Texas. I guess it's very pleasant uh, scenery if you're water. Okay. About 900 miles later, the Pecos pours into the Rio Grande River a few miles west of the city of Del Rojo on the Texas-Mexican border. Because of irregular flow of the river, the compact does not specify a specific amount of water that, that must deliver to each year. So the river isn't like ex extremely consistent. So it doesn't say how much on any given year. It just says how to share. What is there? The rather the compact provides that New Mexico shall not deplete by man's activity the flow of the river at the New Mexico-Texas state line below an amount which will give Texas a quantity of water equivalent to that available to Texas under 1947 condition. So however how much water we got in 1947, we are going to get at least that much water perpetually. 
That's what they agreed to. Fine. The compact, this contract, also in turn prescribes a method to implement it and determine whether New Mexico has met its obligation. The inflow outflow method. Roughly speaking, the inflow outflow method looks at how much water is in the river in New Mexico, which terms determine how much water New Mexico must allow to flow to Texas. So when we figure out how much water should go to Texas, we take note of how much water is in the river to start with. That seems like a reasonable place to start, sure. In 1988, the court appointed Neil Grigg as the river master and continues to serve this position. So I'm not sure whether or not Neil over here thinks that this is a good thing or not at this point, but he was appointed master of the river. Because again, remember, this is a dispute between Texas and, and, and New Mexico, which means it's an original jurisdiction before, between the United States Supreme Court. So the United States Supreme Court said, go ask this guy. That's how they solve that problem. Go ask this guy. Okay. So in making these calculations, the river master must abide by the river master manual which the court describes as an integral part of the decree. So there's a manual on this, on how to, how to count water in river. New Mexico ordinarily receives credit only for water that actually makes it to Texas. That's, that's fair. I mean, the, that's the kind of the agreement we have. It's like, we will not by man prevent you from getting water. So we normally only take credit for, you know, stuff we actually delivered to Texas, fair enough. But there is an exception, such as in this case where water may be stored in New Mexico, as Texas request. You know why it was depleted by man? Because you've asked us to, because of the flooding. Now you wanna sue us. You're lame. Hope you don't ever flood again because we're not gonna store your water anymore. As relevant here, the relevant manual provides that if a quantity of the Texas allocation is stored in facilities constructed in New Mexico at the request of Texas, then this quantity will be reduced by the amount of reservoir losses attributable to the storage. So if you store it because we ask you to, the quantity that we store will be reduced by the amount that's loss that's attributable to the storage. So if it is lost because of the storage, it counts as though we delivered it. Evaporation would be an example of something that would fall into that category. And when released for delivery to Texas, the quantity released less channel losses is to be delivered by New Mexico at the New Mexico, Texas state line. So we will deliver you all the water we stored minus losses because of the storage, such as evaporation. This is what you're entitled to. Seems pretty easy. In the fall of 2014, the tropical storm Odai caused a heavy rainfall in the basin. The rain quickly filled the Texas Reservoir known as the Red Bluff Reservoir. Red Bluff lies just south of the New Mexico-Texas border along the river about 50 miles west of Kermit, Texas. In 2014, to prevent flooding, Texas's Pecos River Commissioner wrote to his counterpart in New Mexico, please hold our water, we don't want to drown. Or to put it more formally, is my request that New Mexico store Texas's portion of the flows until such time as they can be utilized in our reservoir. In response, New Mexico's commissioner agreed the water would be stored at the Brantley Reservoir in New Mexico, a reservoir that was owned by the United States. But he also explained that the water belongs to Texas. It's your water. We're just holding it for you because you asked us to. Beginning in August of 2015, the water was finally released to Texas, but there was a problem. During that time, the water stored in New Mexico, a significant amount of the water, approximately 21,000 acre feet evaporated. All right, so I, I did the math for all you guys. So first of all, just what an acre foot is, is kind of in the description. A, a, an acre foot of water is the amount of water it would take to flood an acre to a foot deep. That's an acre foot of water. So I thought I would translate that into units that you might be more familiar with because I'm such a nice guy. So 21,000 acre feet of water is the equivalent of 26 billion liters. So there you go. It's 26 billion liters of water. That's how much water was evaporated. 26 billion liters was lost to the evaporation. The sun is a harsh mistress sometimes. Due to the early months of 2015, Texaco and New Mexico discussed how to account for the evaporated water under the compact, but they didn't reach an agreement. Uh, Texas wants its 26 billion liters, but you know, no. The river master concluded that the evaporated water was the Texas water stored in the New Mexico reservoir under the relevant act. Applying that provision in the manual, the river master decided that New Mexico was entitled to delivery credit for the evaporated water. 
in the wake of the river master's decision, Texas invoked this court's original jurisdiction and filed a motion for review of the river master determination because we want our 26 billion liters of water very much. Thank you. On the merits, Texas contends it should receive credit for the water that it evaporated while New Mexico was storing the water. Okay. New Mexico and the United States argue that Texas is not entitled to credit because the water was stored in New Mexico as Texas's request. We agree with New Mexico and the United States. You asked us to store it. It evaporated. Sorry about that. To implement the agreement, as we've explained, this court's amended decree to adopt the River Master Manual, which deliberates on how to do this. And then it cites the language we said earlier, which says if it's lost because of its storage, then we're not responsible. We agree with the River Master that the text of the agreement of the manual easily resolves the case. Texas's Pecos River Commissioner asked that the water be stored at a facility in New Mexico when, in 2014, he sent a New Mexico commissioner an email with the plain spoken subject line, Texas request for storage. They sent, sent him an email. Please store our water. In that email, Texas requested New Mexico hold Texas's portion of the flow until such times as it can be utilized in the Red Bluff Reservoir. New Mexico did this. But New Mexico was careful to remind Texas that the water did belong to Texas and that but for the request, New Mexico would have released the water to the state line. We could have released it immediately, which, you know, flooding, but you would have had it. New Mexico also adds correctly, it turns out, that the evaporative losses should be borne out by Texas. Yeah. First, Texas suggests the stored water was not actually part of Texas's allocation. This wasn't our water. Uh-huh. But under that provision, Texas's allocation is the amount of water Texas would have received had you not stored it. This wasn't our water, it was New Mexico's water. Why was it New Mexico's water? We asked them to keep it for us. So that that was our water. They were they were they were a bail or we're old school, we're old school here. They're our bail or and we're the bail e, which is exactly the right words you want to use when you're talking about water. Hey yo, that very, very dry legal joke was courtesy of uncivil law. Second, Texas asserts that New Mexico did not store their water. Really? New Texas wants to say New Mexico didn't store their water. Okay. Texas suggests that the term stored in that provision means holding the water long-term for beneficial use. What? But the manual does not purport to define stored any other way than its ordinary meaning. St st stored means stored. We, we stored it. Okay. Consistent with that ordinary meaning, states regularly use variations of the term store to describe storage. Indeed, Texas' initial request to New Mexico came in an email with a hard to misunderstand subject line, Texas's request for storage. But they didn't store it. Uh -huh. Does this case hold water? Rick comes up with an even better joke. Does the defense's case hold water? Spodling said the joke five minutes ago. Okay, Spodling gets credit. No. The defense is wrong. We, we subtract a point from Rick and we give it to Spodling. Spodling, Rick was merely storing your point. Huh? Huh? Yeah. Texas contends it did not request for the water to be stored in New Mexico after March of 2015. Therefore, according to Texas, any evaporation that occurred from March of 2015 until the water was released to Texas in August of 2015 should be charged in New Mexico. We wanted that water in, in March. Uh-huh. However, even as late as July of 2015, Texas had not requested the water. But we wanted it in March, even though we didn't ask for it. Uh huh. Because Texas did not rescind its request or otherwise ask for a release, you know, they were holding it for you. And then you said, we want our water. We said, OK. And you said, where is it? I said, this is a this is all of it. Where's our other 26 billion liters? Uh, talk to the sun. I don't know what you want from us. We want the 26 billion liters. No. Thus, that brings us to the end of the current case of Texas versus New Mexico, a very, very long water dispute that's been in place since at least 1949 and there's no end in sight. So in this case, Texas was being flooded and they said, we don't really want all this water right now because you know, of the flooding. Would you mind storing it for us? And they said, okay. And then they said, but where's our water? It said, but it evaporated. We're gonna sue you for negligently storing our water. I don't know what the takeaway lesson here is. Does, does Texas not want New Mexico to want to store its water in the future? Maybe next time 
New Mexico, and maybe next time Texas is flooded and said, well, you'll store our water. Maybe, t maybe New Mexico say, how about no? We don't want to store your water because you sued us last time. So how about you can just have all the water now? But we're flooding, we're drowning. Well, drowning it. What's the takeaway lesson here? I'm not sure. But in any case, Texas is short 26 billion liters of water, but you know, sun. So that's the way that goes. And that brings us to the end of the discussion of this case. Are you sure? I'm positive. Thank you so much for being part of the Uncivil Law family. If you enjoyed this legal education content, please hit the subscribe button. It really helps the channel grow. We appreciate your continuing support. Until later, my friends, cheers and goodbye.